Hi, this is Mr. Max with Sankofa Mathematics. Um, I'm going to do a question here on uh, geometric progression taken from the same paper, um, 2021. Right, so this one says the third term. Now, because they're telling you it's a geometric progression, I hope you are familiar with the nth term of a geometric progression. So they are saying the third term, that is the third term of this progression, okay, it's equal to 10. So that becomes a r square is equal to 10. So this, in a nutshell, can be my first equation because the information is not enough. I need to create so that I can be able to find a and r, the common ratio, as well as the first term. The second part then says um, the sixth term, so I'm going to write that one here. So the sixth term of the geometric progression is 80. So this one becomes AR to the power 5 is equal to 80. And again, this could be my equation B. All right. So these two equations I'm going to solve at the same time. That means I'm going to solve them simultaneously and the way I'm going to do that okay I'm just going to uh, divide one equation by the other so I'll be saying I'm going to divide equation B by equation A or you can divide equation A by B it doesn't matter okay but I'm going to choose the first option okay which means I am going to take this whole equation B here and I'm going to divide it by equation A all right, so let's see where that brings us. So I'm just going to pick a different color pen so that the work doesn't overlap so much. So I'm running out of space, but you should be able to follow what I'm doing. Okay, so that is a r to the power of 5 over a r squared. You see where I put my equal to? Equals to 80 over 10. Excuse me. Well, that happened. No, oh, that's another year. Very interesting. Okay. So then the A sort of cancel and 10 goes there eight times. So it leaves me with R to the power of 5 divided by R square should equal to 8, which then leaves me as R cubed is equal to 8. And in order to get R alone, you need to take the cube root of 8 which is equal to 2, okay? So the value of r, therefore, is equal to 2. So r is equal to 2. Did we get that? So it would work the same if you were taking equation a and you put it over b, all right? Um, that is where two, three marks come from. Then now they say we need to find the first term. Now, when you have to find the first term, you either use equation a or equation b. Totally up to you, all right? So I'm going to use equation a which gives me, right, it's, remember, it's a r squared is equal to 10. That's what this equation a is. But we also know at the same time that um, what the value of r is. So it's a multiplied by r, which is 2, squaring that gives you 10, okay? So again, that gives you 4a equals to 10. Where is the 4 coming from? It's 2 squared. All right, so in order to get the A to be on its own, you have to say 10 divided by 4. Therefore, A is equal to 2.5 if you divide 4 into 10. Okay, so um, that is the value of A there. Okay, it's a bit messy, but you get the idea. Now we know what the value of A is. So if I have to write my formula now, all right, um, so suppose, remember the formula, it's T sub n equals to a r raised to the n minus 1. But you're not getting a mark for that, okay? So, um, but here's the thing. They're saying you must find the sum of the first seven terms. So I just want to quickly explain to you what that means um, in a nutshell because you have to use another formula, all right? So if you need to find, say, a certain term, the a value is 2.5 r is 2 raised to n minus 1. So if I said find the first term we know, all right, so the first term, 
the first term, which is represented by a is 2.5. So what would be the second term? All right. So let me not just make that a decimal. All right. So that should be a decimal. So let's say, um, take a long way to explain it, but I think it's important. So what will be the second term? What will be the third term? But we know what the third term is because we are given. What will be the fourth term? So we know that the third term, according to the information here, they said the third term is equal to 10. So the third term will be 10. So 10 would be here and so on. So if you are looking for the second term, then you will be putting a 2 here everywhere where you have the n, okay, in order for you to be able to find that, that value. So, for example, that should have been 2.5 times... 2 raised to the power of 1, okay? So you can 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 1, for example, okay? So what we now see is that the second term will be a 5, all right? And and, and so you can continue. In now, you don't have to substitute. So now this is the first term. That's the second term. That's the third term. So how do we go from this term to that and from the 5 to the 10 and so on and so on? Well, we simply just multiply the term by the common ratio. So if you were multiplying 2.5 times 2, that gives you that value, times 2 gives you that value, then times 2 will be 20, and so I go on. 20 times 2 would be 40. So term 4, term 5, term 6, all right, multiply again by 20 will be 80. Term 7 would be 80 times 260. So what this question is asking you, if you add 2.5, all right, so I'm just going to take this away so you can understand why we are now saying we are dealing with a series. So if you are adding now the terms, you don't have to do this, but I'm just explaining this concept so you can get it, right? So if you are adding these terms together, right, what is that sum going to equal to? That is what this particular question is asking you. All right, but you, you don't have the time to do all of this that I did. I just want to explain the concept that you cannot use this formula to find the sum. All right, so in order for us to find the sum, we have to use the sum formula of a GP, okay? And there are two ways that this formula can be written, okay? All right, so I'm just going to clean that up and I'm going to use that formula. But you can pause the video right here and then you can take your calculator. All right, maybe I can do that as well just to assist one another. And so what I will do is to show you that you're going to get the same answer. So you're going to say 2.5 plus 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40 plus 80 plus 160. What is it equal to? Well, it's equal to 317.5, 317.5. And a half. So let, let me just write that in there because that is our answer, right? So if I write that in there here, so we said our answer was 317.5. So I did all of that to get to this, but it's a long way because I had to explain sort of from the beginning how you get to that. But that's not what this question wants you to do. Once you know the formula, which I wrote on top here, all right, and uh, I'm just going to take all of this off so that we have enough space to work at, all right, and then you see how we then use our formula to find that answer, the final answer of 317.5. Okay, right, so I'm going to also, at the same time, because there's a lot of confusion between the learners when they think that, well, if R is greater than, um, because you'll see that it's done. They say, if R is greater than 1, then you must use this formula. And if R is less than 1, then you must use the formula. Um, oh, that's just a weird way of writing that R. So let me just clean that up a bit. So if R is less than 1, then you must use this one. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Okay. Then, uh, of course, there's also a reason because it makes your, your calculations a little bit easier if R is less than 1. But we know that from our previous work that our A is 2.5, all 
We also know that our R, remember from the first question here, our R is 2. Okay, so our R is 2. Knowing with this, having this, so we can use basically the second formula, but it's the same thing. All right, so we can use this formula here in order to find the sum of the first seven terms. All right, so I'm just going to do that, and then I'll see if with time I can then also do the other one, which is basically the same thing. So the sum of the first seven terms will be whatever the first term is, 2.5, then our R is 2 raised to the power of 7, okay, minus 1, all over 2 minus 1. Well, we're just going to grab a calculator then, and we are going to see what that gives us, okay? So we're going to see if that gives us the same value. All right, so fraction button, so I have 2.5. In bracket, I have 2 raised to the power of 7, okay, take away 1, all over 2 minus 1. Are you with me so far? You hit enter, you realize you get to the same answer. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so the answer is 317 and a half. All right, what if we were to use the other formula? So again, I'm going to remove this, or I'm going to try to squeeze that one in here. So um, this is uh, one way of doing it, but um, let's see if we have space. So I'm going to say, let's use the funny pen, let's use green. So the sum of the first seven terms, so I'm now using this formula here, right, is equal to 2.5 in bracket, 1 minus our R is 2 raised to the power of 7, all over 1 minus 2. So let us see if we get to the same answer. Okay. So again, I'm just going to clear everything on my calculator. Hit the fraction button. So I've got 2.5. and bracket, I've got 1 minus 2 raised to the power of 7. Okay. And then close that bracket. Okay. Oops. Let me just go back. So my bracket is nice. And then this comes over 1 minus 2. If you hit enter, and you see, we get exactly the same answers. All right, so in a natural what I'm saying, I'm saying it doesn't matter which formula you're using, but you would be better off if you follow these little instructions because they make your calculations very easy. So if your teachers are telling you, if R is greater than one, okay, use this formula, then use that formula because it's going to make your calculations very easier, much easier, so you don't have to deal with negative numbers if you were to use the other one. But at the end of the day, it still generates the same answer. Good. Take care and stand by for more questions.